Hey up everyone, today's tutorial is going to be for white fur partly because there's a white dog in my current commission and partly because there's you know a lot of people struggle with doing white fur and I must admit I've struggled with doing white fur in the past as well. I tend to find there's a lot more layering involved in doing a white coat than a black coat. At least in acrylic anyway, it might be different for different mediums. The dog that I'm working on in this painting has also got a bit of wiry coat so White painting wiry coats is a little bit different to painting just normal smooth coats or silky type coats. So hopefully this tutorial will sort of kill two birds with one stone so you can learn how to paint white fur but also wiry fur. So let's get started. So as you can see I've added some um, browns already you know to areas that are not going to be white. Eyes, nose, a couple of patches on ears. And I've just started adding first layer to where it is going to be actually white. There's no special skill to doing this. Uh, you just basically slap painting on. Keep it a little bit on the darker side. You don't want to get too light too fast. This is just under painting so it basically works to create depth to your painting. You don't need to follow any direction or air or out like this at this stage. Like I said, just get the painting on and get that paper or whatever surface you're using covered up. Just speed things up a little bit. This is Oslo, by the way. Oslo, I'm told, is a spaniel cross bully. Just adding some dark tones under his chin, things like that, where there's more shadow going on. Few little impressions like you know with cheekbones, things like that, jawline. Not overly fancy at this stage. Like I said, main thing at this stage is just getting paint on onto paper or canvas, whatever you're using, board, whatever you're using. And just gradually building up your layers. So I'm just adding a few uh, darker tones, you know, to places that are going to be a little bit darker later on. Um, no nose, things like that, eyes, upper lips. And now I'm just going to be adding some um, shadows where there's going to be shadows on his face and now I've, I've started doing like what they call a modelling layer just building up so I'm starting to follow some direction of hair growth now it's not just slapping it on in any direction anymore I'm starting to get a little bit more definition still staying quite dark if you noticed you know not going too light because these are going to be representing the shadows that's underneath that's between the hairs and creating depth in your final painting so you don't want to be going too light too quickly. So I forgot to mention I'm using a number 8 round brush to do this work. It's not a particularly big portrait this as it's part of a bigger painting. So I don't need a bigger brush to add paint in this instance. I have used bigger brushes to add paint on you know larger portraits. Just use whatever brush it suits you best at time. Not too big that it's going to be too cumbersome to add your paint onto smaller areas and not too small that it's going to take you ages to do. So I'm just starting to add some lighter tones for areas at face where there's more light hitting it. 
but I'm not going too light. I'm always keeping a little bit darker, there's like some black mixed in with this white and I'm also using burnt umber and yellow ochre as well in this. You often get a lot of yellow ochre tones showing up in white dogs, especially when they're near things like grass because grass tends to reflect on white dogs in sort of like a yellow ochre kind of tone. I'm now keeping quite strictly to the direction of air growth when I'm putting my strokes on. I've gone down at a few sizes in brush size as you can see because I need to be a little bit more careful around edges at dog and in places where a bigger brush is just gonna you know splat everywhere and just not be much good. Smudge all over the place. <laughs> This is the first time I've been doing voice of so you'll probably notice that. <laughs> I do sound a little bit awkward, but I'm hoping that I will improve over time. It's better than trying to speak whilst I'm painting. Whilst I'm painting, it can be uh, quite difficult trying to speak and think of what to say whilst you're actually painting and concentrating on that. But now I've got the added uh, challenge of putting the voice over to the footage and trying to speak to the footage. <laughs> so just bear me with it on this one. <laughs> I will get better, I'm hoping. And I'm also having to try and shut out all this other noise going on. There's some dogs down the street started barking at each other and then people turning up to house and dog barking when somebody turns up to house. Things like that. All these challenges going on. So I'm just continuing to gradually refine everything, just tidy it up more and more as I go. Just keep layering up, tidying things up, getting ready for your detailing layer. Even though you can see that I'm going lighter, I'm always not going too light. I'm not using like straight white in this. There's always some black and some yellow ochre and what have you involved in these because I want the final white airs at the end to show up against that and it's not so easy to see in this footage that it's not actually white, it, it were actually a bit of a murky shade of grey <laughs> so that your, your white stand out a lot nicer later on. So now I'm going to come in with a number three rigger brush and I'm going to start refining further, adding in actual hair strokes. Just like before, I'm not going to be going too light because otherwise you'll, you'll not see your, your highlights very well, which will be going on last. There's a lot of yellow ochres in these hairs. You'll notice the yellowy tones, you can see them in footage. Later I also added quite a few blues and things like that because you can see a lot of blues reflecting on this dog in reference image. Just gradually tidying things up, adding some darker sh strokes with the shadows and adding some lighter strokes where you've got your highlights. Starting to look a little bit more like actual fur now. I'm 
just going to be adding some airs to lightest areas now again still not going too light you need them very white airs at end to stand out I'm going to have to keep repeating that because it's a mistake I've made that many times in the past this is still just refining it some it's not actual final detail layer yet Paying close attention to the direction of air growth now. Starting to look more genuine like real fur. You might notice that I'm using the rigger brush in a way where I can, what I do is I flatten the bristles in the paint so that it's got two nice sharp corners on each end, at the end of the bristles and then I can use them sharp corners to get finer strokes for your hairs. If you've not seen me do that, it might be worth looking at one of my previous tutorials where I show how I do that uh, when I were painting the pug. So on the final stage of that, I probably showed it, I think stage three, the level step three sorry I showed how to do that because that's where I would have been doing the finer hairs in that stage so if you look at the step three of my pug tutorial you'll probably see how I do that to get finer strokes using a rigger brush So now we're on to the final layer and this is where I start, you know, taking a little bit more time. Taking it easy, not rushing. I've switched down to a size not rigger brush and I'm doing the same thing with bristles just flattening them in paint you can see how it's been flattened and then I can use one of the corners to do the strokes and now I can start getting a lot lighter with the hairs When you're painting wiry hair, it tends to be quite coarse, the individual hair shafts, so it's often quite straight and pokey, and the guard hairs will stand out quite a lot, so you know, you don't want them to be too soft and fluffy, you know, like you would get with silky hair, where it's not so easy to see each hair shaft because it's all blending together because it's all silky and smooth so you need to keep the hairs a little bit thicker, a little bit straighter not cover up your shadows too much underneath them so that they stand out more and you also need to do a bit of crisscrossing because they don't just all fit nicely together like really smooth silky hair that's why smooth silky hair is nice and shiny because all the hair shafts are going in ex you know exactly the same direction because you know they, they just fit nicely together but when it's wiry air it tends to go in all different directions so you need to make sure that you can see the individual hairs sort of doing their own thing when it, it's wiry coat and crisscrossing each other a lot you'll see that a lot more when I start working more on the cheekbones Well, I'm just doing the uh, the beard area around around his nose. Still paying attention to direction of the growth of his hair. So now I've started adding some blue tones. Uh, there's some ultramarine and some processed cyan
I had a bunch of hairs that's got the blue tones in them and then I go back over the top again, you know, just softening things a little bit with white hairs again. You know, just on the edge of that light bit next to his nose. So it's not too, you know, abrupt a transition between the, the sh shadowed areas and the white areas. You just need to sort of overlap the airs, the, the light airs and the dark airs with each other so you've got a more gradual transition between your values. Then I'm working on these cheekbones. You can see me adding a lot of blues into tones now. And then also yellow ochres. Still using my brush in that way that I mentioned before about flattening the bristles and using a corner and I'm making sure that the hairs are not all going in exactly the same direction and they are crisscrossing quite a lot to keep that wiry effect and also making sure that the hairs sort of stand out because wiry hair like I say it tends to be quite coarse so you don't want it too smooth and silky looking. Adding more ochre tones now. The tones that show up on fur will depend on what kind of light is actually hitting the hair and what is reflecting on it. So depending on what direction you know that surface is facing it will depend on what light is hitting it so some it will look more bluish tones and some of it will look more yellow ochre tones these tones can be quite subtle in your reference photos so it's just something you've got to train yourself to be able to see i think when you can see these tones and you're able to emphasize them it enables you to give more life to your painting than what you get in a photograph. That's why sometimes people say that paintings look better than the reference photos that you've used. Because you've given more life to it, being able to emphasise these subtle tones and things that are in the photograph. But they might not show up very well, but you can make them show up a lot better in your painting. I just keep layering up now, switching between light and dark, keeping your hairs crisscrossy and not, unless it's not a part of dog where it's like really light and there's a lot of light reflecting on dog and it's light enough that you can't see the hairs that much, then anywhere else make sure there's still plenty of shadow showing through so you can see the wiriness, keep the hairs kind of you know stiff and a little bit on thicker side and straight crisscrossy for that wiry effect and just keep building it up until you get the effect that you want beauty with acrylics is that you can keep going off at top if you need to go back darker again you can put in some darker airs and then you can go back off at top with some lighter airs You might find with wiry hair that you do get the odd like random hair that just sticks in completely wrong direction. So it's always always helpful to add something like that in to make it look more authentic. When you move into your lighter areas, you still need to remember that sometimes you're going to see little bits of shadow between some of the hairs. So that it retains that hair texture effect. You don't want to, you know, make it like plain white anywhere really. You need to still see some like hair texture even on your lightest bits. Such as like in this case, top of head, top of muzzle. That's where most of the light will have been hitting dog from above. And then some little sticky wiry hairs sticking out from top of his head as well. <laughs> which you, you wouldn't get so much with a dog that had got a silkier coat 
because it, it lays flat, whereas when it's wiry, it, it sticks out, sticks up. I do tend to start using a, a flow improver with me acrylic when I'm doing the lightest hairs. just seems to keep the paint a lot brighter and makes it easier to paint the hairs on and they just stand out a little bit better when I use the flow improver. Just mix some in with some water and it just keeps the opacity a lot better than just mixing with water. I've got a Windsor & Newton one but there's probably others out there, some might be better. I've not been using it that long so I need to do a little bit more experimentation in that area. I just keep building layers up until I get the effect that I want. You'll notice there are still some places, even on top of head, especially just above eyes and what have you, where you can still see some darker areas. You do want to retain some of them. You don't want it all to disappear, otherwise it'll just look flat. I think I'm getting closer to getting this finished now, at least on his face. As you can see, ears still need quite a bit doing to him, but aim of this tutorial to show you how to paint white hair, so wiry hair, so I only really need to show you what what I were doing on the dog's face, on different parts of face. Just adding some final touches on his cheekbones, below his eyes and what have you. There's a few stray hairs going over that brown patch at the bottom there. So anyway, I think we're done now on his face and head area. I think that looks pretty decent. I think there's probably just a couple more little touches to do further down where his head meets his neck but hopefully this tutorial will have given you a better idea on how to paint white fur and how to paint wiry fur as well so if you enjoyed this video if it did help you please feel free to click the like button maybe even leave a comment at bottom and subscribe if you're feeling particularly generous <laughs> And I have got a black fur tutorial coming up for the other dog that's going to be in this painting, which is going to be a Border Collie, a black and white one, which is mostly black. So keep an eye out for that one coming up. But like I say, if you enjoyed this, hit like, subscribe, perhaps give me a comment. There's going to be more tutorials coming up. So that's it then, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.